All right, so this actually is my favorite version of The Three Little Pigs. It's called The True Story of The Three Little Pigs. And this one is told in the wolf's perspective, which means that it's told through his eyes and through his memory. And he is basically saying that, yeah, I did these things, but I had a reason for it. So it wasn't wrong. I had to do it. So let's see if we believe him, okay? This is going to be the trick of this story, is I'm going to read it to you. And you have to figure out, do you think the wolf is innocent? Which means, you know, he didn't mean to hurt anybody. He didn't mean to do anything bad. Or is he guilty? Which means, yeah, he meant to do what he did, and he should be in trouble for it. So let's see what happens, and let's read the true story of the three little pigs, as told by John, oh man, Skieska, Skiesk, Skieska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Sorry, this guy's uh, saying this, butchering this guy's name. All right, so the true story of the three little pigs. All right. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf, but you can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault we eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. You see what's hiding in this cheeseburger? His rabbit ears, mouse tail. Yeesh. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing, it's all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny, and I had a terrible sneezing cold, and I ran out of sugar. This is some crazy cake with rabbits poking out of it. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar, and now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind would build a house out of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake, but that's when I felt my nose starting to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. Seems like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate him up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. And this neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house, and nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed, and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe this, but this guy's house fell down just like his brothers. And when the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. Now, you know how food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. And I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So, I went to the next house. 
It was the first and second little pig's brother. And he must have been the brains of the family because he built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Huh. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. And then the third little pig yelled out, and your old granny can go sit on a pin. Rude. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when someone talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. And when the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. And the rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner, and they figured that a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar did not sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. So what do you guys think? Do you believe him? Do you think he didn't mean to do it and he was just had a really bad cold and he sneezed and blew the whole house down? Maybe. it's It could happen. Uh, so you guys have to really think about it. Whose version do you believe? Do you think it was the pigs that were big and bad? Do you think that it was the wolves that were big and bad? Or do you think that the wolf was framed and he just had a cold? Uh, so we are going to be doing a building activity in just a few minutes. And I'm also going to give you an idea of a snack that you can make that's little pig themed. And we will see what happens. And you're going to need a bunch of materials for this, a lot of creativity. And we'll see how it goes. All right, so we'll be back. Uh, hang tight. And I'm going to present you with the next, next activity. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes.